This Saturday, the WCF Symphony Winds are heading to the Brown Derby Ballroom in Waterloo to take on Mozart's finest wind piece ever written, bar none, the Serenade in B-flat, also called the Grand Partita. And to tell us about the WCF's wonderful winds concert is their music director and conductor, Jason Weinberger. And thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Mozart scored it for 13 instruments, which is really huge for a wind ensemble. So tell us a little bit about this work and why you decided to really zero in on it. This is just an incredible work and use all these superlatives, but none are enough. You know, it's like this one, bar none, like you said, is the best of all the wind repertoire. And there are some other great pieces out there, including the Dvorak Serenade and some others. This piece is both striking in its form and ambition, and of course the instrumentation, which is larger than a lot of the other music like this from the time. So many aspects of it are outstanding, and actually even the instrumentation of this is worth noting, because you mentioned it's written for 13 instruments. The original scoring is 12 woodwind instruments and a string bass, but there's kind of an argument about that string bass part, because one would assume that would be played by another wind instrument, and the wind instrument in that octave is the contrabassoon, which during Mozart's lifetime was a very limited instrument, didn't have a lot of flexibility. Now you have these contra bassoon players play a contra just as well as a regular bassoon. And so increasingly, I think you're seeing groups go back to a contra bassoon with the idea that if Mozart you know, had had that instrument, he would have substituted it for the double bass. But in addition to that, we've got four horns, which is very unusual in a wind serenade. And again, with the horn during Mozart's lifetime being a natural horn, it was significantly harder to play certain pitches given where that particular horn was pitched. So having four horns gave him a lot of other options. And then finally, he adds one of his favorite instruments, an instrument that's kind of key to looking at all of Mozart's wind music, which is the basset horn. And this instrument is famously featured, if folks know, the opening notes of the Requiem. Those are a pair of basset horns, and he uses them in other settings as well. Here we have two clarinets and two basset horns, and the basset horn is really like an alto clarinet in essence. And so actually one of Mozart's best friends was a pioneer of the clarinet and a basset horn player as well as playing all the other instruments. So certainly a lot of the connections that Mozart was starting to make at this point in his life, the opportunity to start writing for some new ensembles. We think this piece was written for an ensemble in Munich, but also he was starting to write opera and he was experimenting with wind instruments. It all kind of came together in this piece. And this was written around the same time as several other woodwind serenades. And those are much more in the tradition of harmony music, which is the name for this Austrian wind music. And this was like the heyday of harmony music. But something else compelled Mozart to write this magnificent work, and we just don't exactly know what that was. So briefly just outline the works that are in the serenade in B-flat. This piece is in seven movements, and if you look at some of Mozart's mixed or string serenades, you see some of the similar kind of movement breakdowns. A lot of those are called divertimenti or divertimento. And it's kind of what it sounds like if you were just to translate it in, into English. Those pieces are very lightweight diversions, you know, made primarily for social events. And the wind music was also generally written for social events as well. But you can't imagine the first movement of this piece as a party piece. It is like a full symphonic opening movement. And that's what strikes people. You have the winds there and you think, well, we're going to hear a bunch of little dances and, you know, maybe a nice sort of operatic slow movement. And that's really how the winds were used. And here's Mozart like, hey, I'm going to write a symphony for winds. And then he proceeds to include some of the other movements you typically expect, the slow movement, which he pairs with a second slow movement. First slow movement is actually the famous one from Amadeus. The second one is a little less well known. Then a couple sets of dances. So these are minuets with contrasting trio sections. So, you know, the group plays the minuet and then like in this first minuet and trio combination, then the basset horns and clarinets get their own movement right inside that little dance. And then back to the whole group again. So we hear more of that, what I would call typical party music of the late 18th century. And then there's also a really stunning movement, which is a theme in variations. Some of the material of which was kind of lifted from an earlier composition and rewritten, but this is just remarkable. It gives a really wonderful chance for the soloists to shine in the variations and the slow movements. The soloists really shine. They have these incredible melodic operatic lines. And then finally, there's this great rondo at the end, which is just like, you know, foot tapping fun to the finish. But the variety in this piece 
and the scope of it, you know, because when you really sit down and perform the whole thing, you're talking about, we're going to sit here for 45, 50 minutes and hear this entire piece end to end. It's really imposing and just gives you an appreciation for how Mozart took the conventions of his time and just exploded them <laughs> to do something new. And it would be amazing to know what audiences thought when they heard this for the first time, because it's full of novelty and interesting things that Mozart came up with. So how can folks get more details and tickets? Well, I'd say visit our website. We've been having some website issues, but if you do visit our website, which is wcfsymphony.org, you'll be redirected, at least for now, to our Facebook page. You can also give a call to the box office or call our office. Thanks for today's WCF Symphony Wonderful Wins conversation goes to artistic director and conductor Jason Weinberger. And thank you so much, and what a great opportunity to hear this magnificent work. Can't wait. It's going to be fun.